This video is sponsored by Tommy John. So, roughly 18 months ago, I may or may not have ruffled some feathers when I remade Rie's arancini rice balls that happened to have spam in them. And admittedly, I went pretty hard on spam. I talked about how I don't like the taste, specifically the gelatinous texture. It also doesn't help that I really don't like pork products outside of bacon either, but today we're gonna see if we can turn things around. For step one in today's concoction, we will be remaking Joshua Weissman's homemade spam with the fats and the meat binders and the whole nine yards and then using that to recreate Rie's arancini balls and see how much better those come out and if we can maybe turn myself into a spam fan today. Leave your predictions in the comment section below, but let's get right into this one. Based on some of your comments, the reason that some of you were upset with me about my dislike for spam was that it is super nostalgic for you, it provides a lot of comfort. But for me, something that has provided me a whole lot of comfort recently is today's sponsor, Tommy John. Tommy John wants men and women to feel comfortable and be their true selves with their no adjustment needed underwear and apparel. They offer premium fabrics, innovative fits, and problem solving functionality, so your Tommy John fit is designed for anything, any activity in your day to day life. That means no pinching or bunching, or most importantly for me, no riding up, as most underwears have my whole life. And although their fabrics are super breathable, they are also unbelievably comfortable and cozy, perfect for the colder holiday season. I love to wear mine when I'm traveling on a plane, when I'm running out to the store for errands. There's really no time I haven't found my Tommy John stuff useful. And when I tell you this sweater and jogger combo has become one of my favorite outfits I've ever owned in my life, I'm not exaggerating. I probably wear them a little too much, actually. So if you would like to see what other insanely high quality products Tommy John has to offer, click the link in the top line of the description, use my code David Seymour, you will get 25% off of your order plus free shipping. And this offer could not come at a better time, peeps. Starting the 27th of this month, they are updating the website with all new products, so start collecting those gifts for all your family and friends. And of course, thank you so much to Tommy John for supporting the channel. But okay, before we can get to Rie's rice balls, we gotta make Joshua Weissman's homemade spam. You will need some sugar and a pork butt, some kosher salt and smoked ham steaks and cornstarch, some straight up pork fat and some potato starch, nutritional yeast as well as some prosciutto, prog number one powder, ice water, and some bay leaves. Now before anything, I gotta get this out of the way right now. I've wanted to say this since that video went up. My dislike for spam has nothing to do with its price point. I promise I'm not an elitist, classist piece of shit. I am definitely not too good for cheap foods. I practically grew up on instant ramen and boxed mac and cheese and still enjoy both of them to this day. It's purely just the fact that I don't love anything about this. I think it's incredibly salty. It's super gelatinous and fatty feeling. As I mentioned, I also just don't love too many pork products. Sorry, fellow Italians out there. But I didn't hate the way that Rie cubed hers up, toasted them off to get a nice crispy exterior. And I can only assume that making this from scratch is gonna upgrade this quite a bit flavor-wise, so let's just see how it comes out. I grinded up all of my animal products, the pure fats, the ham steaks, and of course the pork butt and the prosciutto to get us what looks like quite an interesting concoction of meats. And then you just have to grind up the nutritional yeast to make that a more fine powder. You have to blend up some bay leaves to get some bay leaf powder, which I have never heard of until this day. And then we have to scoop out the most minuscule amount of this prog number one powder. I'm here to tell you I have tried to Google this and read up on it and I still don't really know what it is. All I really know is that it looks like a pink kinetic sand or something that probably shouldn't be consumed and it is used in cured meats and helps bind things too. Outside of that, I'm not too sure. Let's just hope it's safe for human consumption if I add it too much or something. Now the one thing I was pleasantly surprised by when acquiring all the ingredients for this was the fact that I found virtually everything in my local grocery store. Outside of the prog powder, of course, I had to order that online, but everything else from the pig fat, the nutritional yeast, all the starches, everything should be in a standard grocery store for you. But once you have your meat kneaded up well and then combined with the starchy flavoring mix, you gotta knead the hell out of this until everything is super emulsified and becomes one big homogenous blob. Stuff it down in a 9x5 loaf pan, trying to ensure that there are no big air pockets in this anywhere, and then cooking this in the second of the two options Joshua gives us in the oven. I'm assuming most of you would do the same if any of you out there would actually remake this for yourself because the other option was a sous vide, which I do not already have. I'm sure most of you do not, and this will be a good accurate test to see if it works without it. 
You do have to press this in the same pan it was cooked in overnight with a couple of heavy small things. I just used some soup cans. If you got a brick lying around, I'm sure that'll be even better, but once I cut into it, it looks fairly decent, very similar and gelatinous like real spam, so it should work perfect for the next application. And now, to make Rie's arancini rice balls, you are gonna have to grab some white wine and plain breadcrumbs, flour and arborio rice, some chicken broth, marinara sauce, mozzarella cheese, and white onion, our homemade spam, and some parmesan cheese, a fresh lemon, salt and pepper, garlic, butter, an egg, and some fresh parsley. If you remember the last time I made these, I think it was last April, first of all, shout outs to you. Not a whole lot of people watched that video, I don't think. But these were delicious. I had no problem with them, and I'll be happy to remake them again today. I've even made some risotto with the same measurements and ingredients used in this one, one carton of the chicken stock to one cup of rice, a cup of white wine, lots of Parmesan cheese, and it pretty much comes out great every time. Nobody should be surprised by that comment. This is a Rie recipe after all. But once I had everything prepped up, from the onions and garlic to our two different kinds of cheeses, you wanted to chop up your spam into our little dices. Toast those off in a pan until they get nice and crispy. I will say, these smelled absolutely delicious when I was doing this. They were smelling like a cross between the best homemade bacon and like a spiraled ham on Christmas. I was kind of shocked by how much I was salivating over this. And then of course you have to whip up the risotto. I went on a whole 10 minute long tangent in the last video about how scared I was to make this, but I'm pretty confident these days. If you are unfamiliar though, risotto is a dish that pretty much breaks all the rice rules. You add all your ingredients one by one, you add in all the liquids very gradually, you stir it constantly, which I know is a big no-no in traditional rice making. But when done right, risotto comes out so unbelievably delicious and creamy. There's not a whole lot like it. Maybe that's why Gordon Ramsay gets so hot and bothered when people screw it up on Hell's Kitchen. Come here, you. Taste that. Bland. The rice is still undercooked. Disgusting. You are so shit, it's unbelievable. But once you have achieved the risotto and let it cool down in the fridge a little bit, you throw everything together. I was able to form mine into a dozen medium to large sized meatballs. And then for the thousandth time, and then for the thousandth time, and then for the thousandth, 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 and then for the thousandth, and then for the thousandth time, I can't, I can't, I can't. And then for the latest of many times, we are going to coat these in the breadcrumbs, egg, and flour, and then fry them off. Some quick tips for this process. It obviously helps to keep one hand for the dry ingredients, one hand for the wet. That way you don't form mittens of coating on your hands and all the stuff wants to stick to your fingers more than the rice. In addition, make sure your oil is hot enough. You want this over 375, use a thermometer if you've got it. And that's because all the filling is cooked already. You're just gonna melt the cheese and of course, try to get a golden brown coating. And if your oil drops too cold, it's just gonna absorb it all and be super greasy and much less crunchy. But finally, once these were all finished cooking and pulled out of the oil, they were looking so good, almost perfectly circular. Do not forget to garnish these up with some marinara sauce, some more cheese and parsley. And I never thought I'd say this, but I'm pretty darn excited to be about to eat a spam dish. If nothing else, these are super satisfying to look at. They're so perfectly circular and evenly browned across the outside. And if I remember correctly, the, uh, the cross section of these are pretty impressive as well. Yeah, that's confirmed. <laughs> look how cheesy and delicious these look. Mm. So nothing has changed. These are still freaking awesome. I love every single part of this, including the spam. One may say I even enjoy them a little bit. They kind of just remind me of a pepperoni or something. Mm. As per usual, to nobody's surprise, a Rie recipe is delicious, uh, but those two together, it's a pretty strong team.